This fucking shirt is incredible. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you mentioned that you all produce your own beats. I was just curious what sort of tools you use and what sort of sources you have for your instruments and your samples. Um, I, I, for the most part right now, almost 100% use Ableton. I don't, and I don't use any plugins. I'm partially just because I'm very lazy and I don't like learning more than I need to. I just like working with whatever is available. So I, I use Ableton and uh, hours and hours of wasted time watching and picking through terrible movies for sound effects. Yeah. Um, I'll use anything. Uh, really, I, I don't have any I'm not a huge fan of, of Ableton, but uh, kind of ev everything else. Um, I play a lot, um, so not as many samples as I, as I as I used to use. Um, I was a huge fan of just just digging for records, um, but yeah, I like I like a lot of uh, interesting, uh, you know, falling down a good YouTube uh, rabbit hole. And seeing what happens, and then seeing how much I can, I can either distort something or, or you know, play on top of it and create like uh, take things out and then create like a new orchestra, and then just forget the other orchestra that happened. But I, yeah, I, I, I do a lot of um, just my own instrumentation a lot. Keyboards hate pads. What do you like to record and mix in? Hmm. What do you like to record? In? I like Logic. I like Logic a lot. And a quick, quick chime in. Other uh, until I saw Frontalat's session layouts, you were the master of a million tracks. But together, you guys are like the <laughs> the lords of a billion tracks. <laughs> if, if they don't, I, so I, I, I realize tracks. I have some issues. If they don't want me to keep pressing new track, they should put a limit on yeah, how many you can do. There's no limit. There's no limit. There's no limit for my vocal tracks, and then there's no limit uh, for the other thing, which is why it's it's also always um scary to be like and someone's like oh just send me the session i'm like i don't think you want that <laughs> yeah. i should just come over and, and explain it to you for three days <laughs> please don't ask me to do this um my uh my workflow i i stopped using samples when i started selling records as evidenced by the first record being all the old songs that used to have samples with the samples replaced by live instruments and all of it sounds way worse than the <laughs> beats I made with other people's masters. But um, I don't know, we've kind of gotten past that. But yeah, I don't use, I don't use samples in the records and it would be, it would be way closer to hip hop if I did. I don't know if you guys know about hip hop, it's this formal American music style. It was created in the Bronx in the very late 60s and over the course of the 70s. Uh, and it uh, originally used turntables, where you would take previously published music and uh, make new music out of it on the fly. Thank you, this has been- Is that right from Wikipedia? <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, that would, th those, those are cool. Those beats, with beats made out of samples, are just always going to be great. And now they're they're forbidden, and they have been since like you know early nineties, mid nineties. It doesn't stop me. Yeah, yeah. Me neither. Honestly, you can you can. Uh, I'm terrified to be in the position where I put a thing on the record, and who knows some movie or somebody who the kind of people who's still in the world write checks for songs wants to license it. And then all of a sudden, someone's like, mm, mm, actually, that Dead Milkman record belongs to Unified Publico. And I'm they, always just like, oh, I don't know, let's just see what the fuck happens. Yeah. Well, yeah I, you can put it out and you're like, well, let's yeah. see what happens. I wrote, I wrote the dots. And that's always going to work out, except in my paranoid imagination. I mean, that, that's, that's when you remake it. If, if it gets yes. the public like, now, there, there, to there, the there, and remake it. There are things, uh, uh, like we did stuff for uh, for Farrah Monch's record, and it was a, um, uh, a King Crimson uh, sample, and we're like, we clearly, that's not, that's this, this is going to be ridiculous. <laughs> um, do not sample that. Um, so it was like, hey, we can get people to play it, to replay it, and I'm like, I promise you that I can track something. <laughs> Oh, but to answer the question, my workflow um, with my guy I work on beats with, Babs Pella, and my keyboardist slash co-music writer, 
Qminer 7. Um, we use Reason in Ableton and I mix in Reaper and I record in Reaper. Yeah. I also do a lot of recording in a Reaper. Um, I also record on Ableton when I'm on the road. Lately, I've been using Ableton for everything as well. I come from a, a software called Acid Pro. I used to make all of my really worst, terrible beats in that because I had no idea what I was doing. Um, it's only really since I've gotten Ableton where I learned enough like production techniques to actually put out music like with my own beats behind it, really. But yeah, it's mostly all Ableton for me too. But I've had that happen before where like I had a song that had a sample in it and some television show wanted to use it or something. And um, I'm like, I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. And the producer was like, oh, I'll just remake it without the samples. And it's fucking awful. I mean, it was just absolutely terrible. It was like this, like he sampled this song from like the 50s with these beautiful harmonies. You can tell it were taped on like ribbon mics and like mm -hmm. it just sounded wonderful. And he just like was in his bedroom trying to do the harmonies. Like, nah, dude, like this, this sounds bad. This ain't the same song, you know? I mean, you know, but, but yet and still, I, I still think that like there, there will always be a place for uh, samples hip-hop just because yeah. just that the, the texture is involved I mean because a lot of times when people use like all live instruments they tend to use like the same kits or the same packages and then like most of the songs end up having like the same color on the album but when you're able to add samples I think it just really I don't know it, it, it makes it where you can just paint with a bunch of different yeah and and, and you know having the ability to take like your your kicks and your and your and your snares and 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 hi-hats from these different kits and these different eras and be able to yeah. to build your own little worlds and and you know people people listening to it if, if they get it they get it and you're like yeah I know you heard that snare. That was a primo snare. But the primo snare from Crooklyn Dodgers. The remix, not the original. Crooklyn Dodgers number two.